I, I think today um, we want to get a perspective uh, from the different <coughs> perspectives here, the different panelists, and kind of go through um, a little bit about the early thinking as we start to look at this area around edge computing and dynamic networks combined. For now, introduce yourself and your company, and then when we get to the slides, you can go through kind of what your role is in this idea of edge computing and dynamic networking, um, one by one, using your slides as a vehicle to kind of go through that. Uh, so introductions, let's start with Wada. Sure, thank you, uh, Mike. Uh, good morning, everyone. My name is uh, Wada Eli, and uh, I, uh, I run the uh, enterprise networking and cloud business at uh, Bell Canada. Uh, Bell is uh, the largest service provider and, and, and wholesaler and internet provider and technology provider uh, across wireless and wireline um, uh, TV and media and entertainment in, in the Canadian marketplace. Um, uh, very happy to be here and, and, and talk through uh, some of the great things we're doing around, around the edge. Uh, I'll, All right. That's it. Sounds Andy, good. Please, go ahead. Well, good morning, everyone. Uh, Andy Asava. I'm with InfoVista. I run the global networks business. And the global network business encompasses 4G, 5G, along with service assurance, and uh, taking a look at connected cars. <coughs> so uh, as we look at virtualizing networks, service assurance is very near and dear to our heart. And we want to kind of talk about some of the innovation we are looking at uh, in that particular space. Robert, please. Good morning. My name is Rob Tompkins. I work for Blue Planet, which is the division of Sienna that focuses on software and around automating networks. And my role is uh, Senior Director of Software Innovation. So I look at how that's all going to evolve. I look at how uh, automation is going closed loop, how service assurance is influencing it, and where we really see uh, automation hitting the network, and that includes edge computing, where you have limited resources, truck rolls to get people out there, limited skill sets, power, space, all those sort of constraints really conspire to a completely different type of oper operational model, and that includes automation and Blue Planet. All right, and Rodney from Equinix, please. Good morning. Um, I'm Rodney <coughs> Elder. I'm with um, Equinix. I'm a global principal at Equinix. One of the things that we'll focus on today that Equinix is enabling is edge, edge compute, and, and network uh, automation with a lot of our networking partners and how the end customer, the enterprise consumers, are being able to take advantage of the things that Equinix is doing in the marketplace to uh, um, take their digital transformation to the next level. Thank you. Um, so one additional comment I'll make, and, and this comes from, I guess, the tentative title of my report, that edge is in the eye of the beholder. And the uh, reason I kind of came with that at least catchy tentative title is the fact that everybody has their view of the edge, including the customer, by the way. Let's not leave the customer out of this. Um, and everyone has their view about where is that exact location of the edge. And so as you might suspect, because of that, there are various implementations, there are various architectures. Um, I could argue, for example, with Bill Canada and most telcos, they've already gone to the edge. They've been to the edge for years. Um, this is just another flavor of what are you doing at each point of their network now right to the customer's prem. But the reality is most telcos have gone to the edge and back. So uh, with that little introductory part, I'm going to run through uh, at least the slides that are shared and let each of the panelists kind of go through uh, what's been shared. So it's your hurry up first. Uh, sure. I think uh, when we look at the edge from our perspective, it's... Um, you know, you know, we take it from, from the customer's use cases. Our client come to us and say, you know, look, we have a, you know, we have a network. We have, a, you know, an IT infrastructure uh, serving our branches, our locations. And, uh, and now the, uh, you know, the focus is around how to secure that, you know, the, the users in those locations, whatever they are, they, they get access to best performance applications, especially the mission critical ones. And so the start of conversation there is, is, is now becoming, okay, so where, where, that, where an application X, you know, is better suited to be hosted, right, for me to guarantee that, that, that user experience that I'm, that I'm seeking, to guarantee that frictionless uh, experience that I'm, that I'm seeking as an enterprise for my users, whether it be clients or, or, or staff, right? And so for us, we, you know, we started looking at the edge as, as a, 
as one, one of uh, the locations from a, uh, in, in, a, in a much wider distributed cloud, right? The edge is part of that, that cloud architecture. Um, it allows, uh, you know, a couple of things. One is to, uh, you know, be able to run some of the ultra low latency use cases that we start seeing, right? Our customers are coming and asking us to enable some of these. And then the second piece is to, um, equally important is to be able to run and process high volumes of data real time. An example of that in the retail space, some of our clients, uh, larger retailers in, 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 in the Canadian market and, uh, and, and outside as well, uh, you know, are asking us to, to enable some of the um, uh, you know, closed loop uh, type of uh, automation and, and AI uh, based uh, uh, you know, processing of, of data that enable them to, to understand you know, the, 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 the foot uh, the, the, you know the, the foot traffic of their of their uh, of their clients, right? And and be able to to understand their uh, behavior while they are in in their store or in their locations, and be able to respond the real time to, to these to these behaviors so that they can secure um, um, you know the the business, but secure as well the loyalty and that that frictionless experience. So this is the starting point, and we're adapting our network infrastructure and architecture to be able to do that. So we have a number of um, uh, you know, central offices across the country, uh, ports of presence that we're converting into data center-like type of uh, infrastructure, and so we're starting to hold some of the workloads there, as well as leveraging the, the customer edge or the enterprise edge at the branches through our UCPE platform to host as well some of the workloads beyond the networking workloads that are classically hosted there. All right, thank you. So, um, you know, what I wanted to cover with this slide is, is kind of the journey we've been on, and, and what we saw is edge computing, as a couple of customers have said to me, is absolutely going to redefine the internet as we see it. Content providers, cloud providers, service providers, data center operators, um, the enterprises, and the consumer relationships are all changing at this uh, very time. And the edge is a real component, a keystone, on how this is all going to resolve. Where are the different functions going to reside? Where's the content, the application, the infrastructure going to reside? One of the things we really recognize is that the operational model uh, has been evolving, right? You look at the way the cloud, of, cloud works versus telecom is operated, clearly telecom needs to continue to evolve. And when you look at the edge and what's needed from the edge around low latency, around responsiveness, flexibility, we have to redefine the edge into a much more automated model. And we see evolving the edge from uh, relatively static today to something more programmable, some uh, with self-healing, being more proactive, and becoming a truly and fully adaptive network that has uh, closed loop um, analytics uh, running on top of it with service assurance so that it basically runs itself. And we also see taking it one step further where it becomes application aware. So overlay, underlay, service assurance, overlay, underlay, closed loop adaptation. And uh, part of what we've been doing, and we started this journey actually in MEF 18, we got the gold award yeah, with Equinix, with AT&T, <clears throat> doing enterprise edge services. And we've gone out, we've productized that, but we've continued to go along this journey that I present here, making more programmable, more self-healing, um, more closed loop. And what we've brought this year as a proof of concept shows closed loop with service assurance, overlay and underlay. It looks at what kind of performance, what kind of quality of experience the end user is getting. In this case, we're using video because it's a uh, very flexible uh, and demonstrable technology, but it could be SD-WAN, it could be your 5G overlay, it could be any sort of application <clears throat> you want to prioritize that you get some telemetry from. We can use it to identify how the network is impacting that application and prioritize the repair and automate the repair of the network to facilitate the applications that matter to you. And that's what we're showing um, is proof of concept. In fact, we've taken that one step further by federating it, showing you a service that spans, um, you know, a service provider type network, a DCO network, and uh, how 
we can navigate and determine root cause and uh, resolve all of that. And this is how we really see at Blue Planet the edge evolving. All right, I think so you, you have this, and I think one more slide I'll get to for you. Uh, uh, yeah. Excellent <laughs> job. Well done, Rob. Because <laughs> <laughs> right. I'm going to build on it in the next slide. Okay, well, here's the next slide. So, um, so uh, this morning, um, I, I, I was thinking about all the presentations that we had this week, um, and, I, and it was even better because when Josh was up here talking, I'm going to paraphrase what he said, he talked about um, how you know, there's not going to be a perfect world and, and that customers are going to do things that are easy to consume, they're going to do things that are valuable to them. Um, and, and then uh, I think it was Eric who was talking a little bit about uh, where Verizon's going. So this is an example, I think, what I wanted to share with you of real world. This is happening right now at Equinix at the edge of the clouds at the edge of the network, <laughs> building on what we're doing with Blue Planet and what Rob just took you through. Um, this is real world. We have customers who are taking advantage of the Equinix Performance Hub, gaining all the bullet points that are there. I won't read through them. You can see them as well. Um, but really, it's about that red line at the bottom where Verizon is working with Equinix to create that Verizon application enablement service on an end-to-end -end basis. Equinix is in there, but we're in there making it happen. We're in there helping the organizations take advantage of the cloud, take advantage of all their carriers, take advantage of... <laughs> dynamic network reconfigurations, the automation capabilities, um, the orchestration capabilities on end-to-end, -end, um, and the, th the role that we see as Equinix, we, we stay in our, in, our, in, our, in our space. Our space is about interconnectivity. Our space is about helping customers take advantage of real-world, um, uh, real-time bandwidth on demand from multiple carriers. But this example here is, is one that we've just recently announced with Verizon. Um, it, where Verizon is bringing their network elements to the edge of the, the, the Equinix environment. We, customers are taking advantage of Equinix's performance hub capabilities using our cloud exchange to then aggregate the cost to multiple clouds. So I really think that um, this was a great example from my point of view on, on what's happening today. All of this is underpinned by the great work that, that MEF is doing, helping the individual organizations look at the frameworks, looking at LSO, looking at MEF 70, and saying, what can we implement today that we can use in the infrastructure and the capabilities that we have in our back office and our operating, off, uh, our, our, our OSS environments to enable customers to do things right now that are valuable, fast, and efficient? I have a question for you, just because it comes up when I saw this, and also uh, track, obviously, Verizon, its <coughs> developments, as well as other large carriers, but I'm just curious, uh, you know, three years out, four years out, and knowing Equinix pretty well, you've got, I don't know, hundreds of data centers, whatever the number is. 250. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> and you've got at least 300 plus carriers in, in your data centers. 1,500. Okay. So then the question becomes, are we going to see a, four years from now a chart with 450 carriers doing this? And in all of your 250 data centers, I, I, it's just a question I came up with thinking about this. Does it get that complex or not? I certainly hope so. I think that uh, this is one example of real world. I think many of the network uh, carriers who are partners with Equinix um, who have facilities in our, have uh, locations in our facilities are all looking at this sort of thing. Yeah. And, I, and let's not forget about the cloud companies, those blue dots over there. Every one of those cloud companies who operates network hubs or, or network yeah. um, uh, hop off points at Equinix, they look a lot like carriers. Their yeah, infrastructure I, isn't that much different yeah, from the, the transport for carriers. I didn't want to go there right now. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but I did want to, I'll, you'll make me put the word in now for them, because I think what we're seeing, um, basically, you know, kind of uh, globally, is uh, to that point, um, part of the uh, edge services participants, part actually the network services portfolios, <clears throat> um, are going to come from cloud providers. And that includes this similar list of SaaS providers, cloud providers. You know, you think about um, you know, SAP HANA on cloud, you think about uh, Cisco WebEx. These are all cloud services that are backed by global networks, typically in data centers like Equinix. And then the question becomes, as they start offering network services to connect their customers, you know, how much overlap and competition is that? So I, I was gonna talk about cloud and edge in the sense that Many of the cloud providers you know, aren't here today, but they're moving out to the edge to expand their cloud services closer to the customer. Um, that could be in a small data center, it could be in a private data center, it could be in the customer's data center, it could be in some cases on-prem. But I, I, did, I didn't want to leave that out because I think it's important to know that those cloud service providers, 
Um, I didn't want to get the network part, but the fact that they are moving their services out, there will be AWS instances that won't be in the huge data center. They may be in remote nodes. They may be in a customer center, for example. I, and this chart actually helps bring that out. Just, just to add to that, yeah. I think because of all those elements, customers, the actual enterprises, were taking advantage of the network in the cloud. Um, earlier, is that me? Hello. <laughs> We, we, we were, we've been demonstrating with Sienna um, a multi-domain multi and federated orchestration. And I think those, that's the sort of thing that enterprises are going to be looking at to bring all these things together. It's not one or the other. It, it, it really is going to be how they take advantage of all of it. Yeah, I mean, you bring up a really good point. I mean, the edge has always been around. And there's been, when you take a look at the overall journey, there's been a transformation of the edge uh, over time. You know, initial focus of that journey was around security because that was the big DMARC point. We were looking at demilitarized zones and looking at IPS, IDS, different malware detection technologies and uh, threat signature de uh, detection technologies. And then that transformed again when you started looking at real-time applications like voice and video with SPCs coming to the edge and session border controllers. And that was a big, big market and that created the whole UCAS model and created a whole disruptive mindset with respect to people opening up their stacks and coming up with true pass offerings like Twilio's of the world in the, in the place. Uh, but that also got sparked out of the edge. And now when you take a look at, and each one of them enabled not just a technology transformation, it was a business model uh, transformation. It would create a new economic opportunity. Now with virtualized services, we are here again reinventing the edge rediscovering what those different business models are, where we can monetize on it. But when you start looking at it, where we had physical devices before, and now we are getting into a world where we have a plethora of virtualized services and microservices that are being injected into that edge, you know, that is becoming the convergence point. Even with all those dynamics and fragmentation that's going on, it is still a convergence point for the, the network, the application, and the user. And at the end of the day, it is going to be the user experience that's going to dominate what that business model is going to be, what is that monetization opportunity is going to be. But for that, we need data, right? We need that data to be able to correlate. More and more, we are becoming more big data oriented. We are becoming data scientists to find the trends, find the analytics, to be able to manage into the orchestration framework and creating the self-healing networks, but it's all going to be predicated based on the quality of data that we can bring forward. And that means taking a look at not just a slice of that underlay, whether it's MPLS, whether it's a routed infrastructure, whether it's 5G, or not just looking at overlay, which is not just SD-WAN, it could be security services which are virtualized and de uh, deployed. It could be UC and UCAS services that are virtualized and deployed. It could be even contact center pivot points that are being deployed from that particular edge. So it's not just looking at those two views in silos, but, and also not across even multi-vendor, but it's really trying to correlate it. And that to me is the key word. We are investing a lot of energy in trying to give that correlation. And it's not just going vertically across the stack, but also going horizontally looking at LAN, WAN, because until and unless we can assure these services the monetization angle is going to be very weak. I know we're all embracing SD-WAN, and every year I hear the hype, and we're all blindly deploying it. And until we cannot get control of the data and the telemetry and be able to get the assurance that's needed, right, the, the monetization aspect is going to be very minimum. So to me, that's where I see the value of the edge and where InfoVista is trying to focus a lot of our energy in that particular space. And you mentioned uh, data. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, is I'm just trying to think: is the data meant for the end user, um, or for the provider uh, to do what they need to do for the service? It's uh, mostly for the. It's taking a look at at a session based. What is the overlay that that performing? Right, taking a look at the VNFs and the service chaining and the UCP performance, including the underlay, and then providing that data back into. 
an orchestration framework where which we can dynamically go fine tune it. That really three use cases, the three outcomes okay. of the data. The first one is business intelligence. Right? That is feeding into your machine to figure out are you monetizing your services the right way? Are you undercharging for a service that's using way too many network resources? Right? So that's the first one. The second one is a little bit of a longer term view of capacity planning. And the third one is the dynamic aspect, which is feeding it in real time into your orchestrator and resizing that VNF that is taking video services and saying, oh, I'm getting bad quality, not meeting the customer expectation, resize it before they raise the trouble ticket. Now, we want to get to that level of responsive. So those are the three outcomes, the business piece, the long-term forecasting on how you want to shape your network moving forward, and then the, the closed loop that we need to do from an agile perspective and then drive uh, dynamic uh, VNF instantiation or microservices instantiation at the edge. Yeah, well, do you have any thoughts about it as a carrier perspective? I think, what, are, what are your thoughts about that? Um, you know, I, uh, I want to bridge on a point that, that was mentioned before, which is around, around the data. And, uh, you know, in the context of security, data becomes, you know, extremely <coughs> crucial, right? And, uh, um, you know, from our perspective, what we see in the marketplace is that, you know, there, there has been a consumption of cloud-based security broadly by by enterprises of, uh -huh. of all sizes, right? And um, I think once we started, you know, coming and, and, and giving sort of an edge version of that, that security fabric, right, suddenly the eyebrows went, went uh -huh. up and said, well, you know, this is, an, you know, another paradigm. This is a, another dimension, right? Now I'm, I'm able to, to leverage the, the great amounts of data that are generated from the overlay and the, and the underlay infrastructure and, you know, you as a service provider, you know, providing both at, uh, you know, to craft uh, more of a hybrid security posture and, uh, and, and be able to, you know, process some of that data to, to give, uh, you know, better resiliency, um, you know, faster, right? Uh, before that data travels back and forth between the, between the end users sitting somewhere closer to the edge and the cloud, right? No one wants that. And so right now, from a security offering, you know, the edge opens up, you know, another opportunity for, for us and for our enterprise customers to say, you know, it's, an, it's, a, it's a hybrid security offering rather than just a pure cloud security offering. And we're, we're currently in, in deployments of, of, of the sort with, uh, with some of our cloud security, you know, partners and, and our own security um, um, offering that we offer at the edge on a sort of a... Uh, a UCP platform, and, and, and we, we, we think that this will continue to, uh, to evolve, uh, you know, further, and, you know, certainly the, the fabric around the, the edge and, and, and the MEX as well, like the MEX will come, will come into that, that dimension, because then, then, you know, you can think about, you know, using those, the MEX to virtualize a bunch of firewalls there and, and embed that security uh, architecture into the network as well. So it's increased opportunity yeah. from, uh, from that perspective. So you already went through kind of your role, <coughs> excuse me, in, in the edge computing environment. Um, some of you have mentioned kind of some specific use cases that want to contact. And I guess what we'd like to hear about, or, uh, you know, in general is what, what is the demand you're seeing today? So what, what maybe not naming customers so much, but name a vertical of sorts and what they're asking you to do as it relates to this edge computing, edge services environment. What are, you, what are they asking you to do? And maybe a couple examples, uh, maybe again, a couple minutes per panelist. I could start from our perspective, uh, you know, uh, you know, managing a large, uh, large amount of enterprise customer role sizes. I think uh, the two verticals particularly that we see you know, jump in on the opportunity of the of sort of the edge compute and the the new uh, the new architecture. One is retail, and the second one is fin you know, F and I financial services, right? On the retail side, you know, you know, it was a, it was an obvious one. It's more of a, you know, how do you, how do you uh, how do you get you know the 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 customers that walk out into your venue, that be a mall or or you know large uh, you know outlet or or, or that kind of uh, that kind of venue. And make sure that you know more about who's walking by the stores <laughs> instantly, and and be able to leverage that data, you know, fast and do some marketing, some positioning, um, 
you know, push, uh, push folks to, to, be, to be using your app uh, as, as a business as they, as they shop. And so they, th th there is a huge interest there in, in that segment. Uh, and we're working with some of our, uh, some of our customers to figure out a, 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 um, a suitable architecture that leverages the multi-cloud or distributed cloud architecture and the Azure part of it. Financial services is more, is more around, um, you know, leveraging those um, uh, edge platforms that we deploy uh, in, in their locations, whether that be a UCPE or a more powerful server and be able to bring and virtualize some of the networking workloads, but also some of the applications that they use uh, inside some of them, you know, security related and, uh, you know, and be able to process big amounts of data there uh, and, and, um, and, and, you know, use, use that opportunity there. So it's, it's, it's sort of a different, different paradigm, yeah. <clears throat> but, but those are the two, I would say uh, two verticals are jumping on the opportunity and working very actively with us on, uh, you know, leveraging it. Uh, yeah, thanks, Andy. Yeah, uh, one that comes right uh, on the top of my mind is the connected car space. Uh, we're very actively engaged in that particular area, working with not only the car manufacturers, but also the auto parts uh, companies there in that space. And the challenge in that space is it's not just connectivity and it's not just infotainment type of applications that they are utilizing in their car. They're also utilizing which are applications that are absolutely necessary. Some of them are even life-sustaining applications. Uh, so, so ultra reliability and consistency is so critical. So how do you assure that link in that particular environment? And that is a, a, a very, uh, in, a, in a disaggregated environment, you're only as strong as your weakest link. So if there's one particular function that's not per per performing, per per particularly a virtualized function, is not behaving as and conforming to the requirements so that we can deliver this life-sustaining service, it can break the whole model down. So we've been actually very actively partnering it, and it, it, that's across the entire chain. It's not only the instrumentation that sits in the car, but at how the data is getting pulled back into a mobile edge compute. Uh, slash and SD-WAN infrastructure where you can even do dynamic path selection based on specific algorithms. Uh, and then ensuring that, again, the orchestration that's needed. Uh, so there's a very tight linkage and bondage between assurance and orchestration because if, unless you don't close the loop, you can never fix it. You can never be proactive about how you want to manage it and deliver that experience to the end customer. So what, what we're seeing with 5G is going to be the ultra low latency which, and reliability is going to be so critical, which means assurance is going to be the underpinning moving forward. So that's one area that we are seeing very active engagement at this point. Okay. If I may, I can bridge on, on, on this idea yeah. of, uh, of the, the automation. And the, you know, one of the opportunities that our clients see as well through this is the ability to automate some of the service assurance processes and be able to you know, almost safe heal the network. Because the last thing our clients say is, you know, every time there is a, a problem in my branches, the last thing I want to have is disruption. I don't want to disrupt my yeah. branch with a truck roll, right? right? And so, you know, it's an advantage for us as service providers because, it, you know, it streamlines our operational, um, uh, you know, uh, process and the way we're doing things from a cost perspective. But also from a, from a business and enterprise perspective, it, it gives them a little bit more of a, a, a business continuity guarantee that, uh, that can, can be leveraged through, uh, through the automation brought, uh, brought in the bread in edge. Hi, Rob, do you want to go? Yeah, so uh, I would, I would uh, echo the, those responses, absolutely. I mean, definitely uh, wireless is a huge area for edge computing. We're seeing uh, just about every service provider has uh, their own IoT implementation they're doing. Uh, we're seeing uh, video being a big area for edge, using that as infrastructure. Um, certainly universal and virtual CPE, uh, both residential and uh, even some, or uh, uh, certainly enterprise, some residential starting to creep up as well. Um, gaming is showing up. Um, so, you know, there's a lot of interest in the edge, a lot of different use cases. Um, and we're seeing, you know, the industry really trying different things out, figuring out what do yeah. I need there? How do I operationalize that? Who do I need to work with? Who do I need to federate? What data do I need to collect? Um, you know, a lot of different opportunities. Yeah. Uh, it's a you know, pretty uh, wide breadth, um, but it, it kind of leads me just overall just a comment a 
around, this seems like the age of experimentation. They try to figure out the right architecture and, of course, the appropriate performance for that architecture and then tweak it to see if there's, let's say, four or five alternatives that may work and then hopefully come to a stable. But it's still, I guess in my view, I'm going to say it's the age of experimentation as they, uh, all, we all try to figure this out. Now, Equinix, please, I want to give you a shot at this. Yeah, yeah. I just got to build on that. Uh, our customers are, are coming to us and saying, you know, we, we've got a current state and we know the gaps and the problems that we have in our current state. And, and we, the industry, are showing them, a pa uh, showing them a future state. Sometimes we show that future state in individual capabilities, you know, whether it's you know, an Equinix performance hub. Uh, but the customer's real issue is, how do I get there? How do I get there at the lowest risk? How do I do something today that maybe fixes or resolves a gap in my current state to get to that future state, knowing the only thing they know is what they don't know. Yeah. <laughs> that there's a ton of things that they just don't know that are going to come up because you know the pace of innovation. I think it was um, um, uh, Sue from AT and T was talking about pace of innovation um, yesterday, and that scares customers. That pace yeah. is something that frightens them. And, and they don't know how to take advantage of that. And that's really the element that Equinix brings to the conversation is that if you place your core strategic elements in, in, in an edge data center that has this multifaceted capability of taking advantage of 5G, taking advantage of direct connectivity to the cloud, taking advantage of all the things that we, again, as the community deliver to them, it helps them mitigate, at least in their minds, that risk associated with how they get from current state to future state. I mean, that makes a lot of sense. But, uh, it's, I see a plea for the edge to be an economic data center, but it's subtle, but it's there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I think the last question, we only have a minute and a half left, so this is going to be a, a 15 second response by all. It was a question I think I sent out to you all to asking about how does this get monetized? Just quick thoughts. How does it get monetized? I have a theory, but I won't put that out there yet. But I'll start with you, Wada. Um, from a perspective of a of a service provider, um, it, it's uh, it's essentially um, you know uh, keeping the uh, keeping the you know the you know the cost, the customer um, from a loyalty perspective. You have to be able to provide more, you know, as a service provider at the edge, right? Right now, you know, historically, the service provider provides bandwidth that doesn't cut it anymore, right? You have to be able to provide. Uh, more than that, you have performance, right, and uh, and user experience, and so that that's that's a perspective that we're looking at from an edge uh, perspective and monetizing the the uh, the edge compute and the distributed cloud uh, architecture. So, uh, Andy, well, from a service assurance perspective, um, you know, InfoVista truly believes that we got the edge uh, because we, it's really built into our DNA, right? We you know we're passionate about it. And we think that that is where the monetization is because, you know, can the carriers go deploy an assured SD-WAN service uh, provide with SLAs that they can count on, which will differentiate over other deliverables and get more money, yeah. right? And I think that is going to be critical. If we can do that, I think, on the other hand, if you don't do it, there's going to be a churn that you'll have to go deal with. So we think we are right at the heart of it to figure out how we can monetize on that. All right, Rob. So I would say, you know, there's a lot of talk about new applications and new uh, opportunities there, but just getting your network to be flexible, getting it on demand, and improving the quality of service to the end customer, we're already seeing cu our customers get, you know, a 20% increase in revenue um, from their existing customers by making the, their service flexible, on demand, uh, and responsive. Uh, okay, so that, that goes along with my theory. It's just more of the same revenue. It's just come in and with a different. You're you're delivering it a different way, but network revenue or colo revenue is still network revenue or colo revenue. You just change the architecture to perform better. That's one thought. Uh, I would say you've changed the architecture, perform better, but you've also created the ability to to burst up and use a service temporarily for a while. And burst it back down, yeah. which the customer never would yeah, have considered that, before. That is the right? dynamic part of this new architecture. Right. So there, there's. Uh, so I got to move to. I got to move to Rod. It, it, you know, it, I, I'll get from, from the customer's point of view. 
um, it gets monetized when you remove internal friction for the customer. The customer is going to do more, AKA buy more of yeah. whatever it is they're doing, but when you remove friction so that they can do that and do that rapidly, that's where it gets monetized. Yeah. Okay.